one of my most popular videos on this channel is on the HD7470, but with the amount of traction that the video got, there was a large amount of comments telling me how my i5-2400 I was using to benchmark was a bottleneck. So two years later, with a lot more knowledge behind these cards, I'm coming back for a re-review. So yes, you heard me correctly, lots of people complained in the comments that a Sandy Bridge i5 chip was bottlenecking a 7470, even though in the top right MSI Afterburner was clearly showing that the GPU was 100% usage, but nevertheless, this card was released back in 2012 on the Terascale 2 architecture, running on a 40 nanometer process size with 1GB of GDDR5 VRAM. This card was never meant to be for a gaming market. But what I soon learned after releasing my video is that there seems to be a large majority of people out there still stuck using this card, claiming they can get 70 FPS in GTA 5, which I highly doubt. But I'm still going to go through the effort of redoing all my benchmarks on better hardware to clear up any confusion. So what testing rig have I got at my disposal this time? Since I recently upgraded my main machine on a budget, video to come soon, I'm now running an i7-2600K overclocked to 3.8GHz, paired with 16GB of DDR3 memory clocked at 1600MHz, a machine that should definitely not hold a 7470 back. So without further ado, let's get straight into our benchmarks. Starting off with Beeman G Drive running at 720p lowest settings, where we pulled off an average of 13 FPS, which in my books isn't very playable and was too demanding for this card. Next up, CSGO with some deathmatch in Office running at 720p low settings, where we pulled off an average of 66 FPS. While on paper it does sound good, there was some stuttering when killing people and shooting in general, which isn't really ideal in CSGO, but overall it was playable. The Counter-Strike Source benchmark running at 1080p high settings where we pulled off an average of 73 FPS and overall it ran perfect. Next up GTA 5, remember that comment earlier telling us we could run at 70 FPS? Well, this is running at lowest settings, running at 800 by 600 and normal or lowest settings, but we pulled off an average of 28 FPS, which is on the border of playable. Euro Truck Simulator 2 running at 720p lowest settings, where we pulled off an average of 45 FPS, which for a game like Euro Truck was perfectly fine. Next up, doing some off roading and spin tyres, Mud Runner running at 1024x768 high settings, where we pulled off an average of 18 FPS, which wasn't playable. The game didn't look great at all and overall this title won't run on a 7470. And to finish us off, a new title with Valorant. Running at 1080p high settings, we actually pulled off a pretty respectable 26 FPS with no real lag or stutter during the game. So if you wanna play Valorant on your 7470, it will run okay. So at the end of this video, I was honestly expecting to come out the other side heavily criticising this card, but honestly, it performs about on average to other cards in the same price range. But that doesn't mean that I agree with what the comments section was hyping it up to be. It's still the same old graphics card that wasn't designed for gaming and was better suited to its days in pre-built business machines. But I'm sure that if you have absolutely no other option in terms of a graphics card, it will hold up well as long as you crank those settings way down. I'm Owen, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.